So we're out at the Bodega Marine Lab and we're here with the abalone queen herself, Dr. Sarah Bowles, and soon to be uh, Dr. Rebecca Mata. Uh, today we are going to try caviar for the first time. So we've got a few pairings here and I've got a couple a surprise pairing for them, a little lower brow pairing, let's say. Sarah's a little bit of a foodie. So we're going to see uh, how they enjoy their caviar and what are their first responses to taste and flavor and texture of eating caviar uh, for the first time. We're gonna go with plastic spoons here. One of the reasons why we're just using a plastic spoon versus a metal spoon, because the metal can interfere with the, the salt flavor, the, cat, the eggs of the caviar. We don't have any abalone shell uh, spoons or mother of pearl available to us today. Rebecca, have, have you ever had caviar before? Never. You, you never, what's your, do you have an opinion of what do you expect it to taste like? Uh, salty and strong. Uh, Paris a quiet taste, so we'll see what I think of it, uh, but I'm very excited. Okay, what about you, Sarah? you have any opinions, any ideas, what your expectations of what caviar uh, may taste like? I have no expectations. I think I'm just really excited to try it for the first time. Um, I've heard that it can be a little buttery and also a little salty, but I'm about to find out for myself. Today we're going to go with the Tsar Nikolai Reserve Caviar. The farm, Tsar Nikolai Caviar, is in Wilton, California. Uh, Rebecca, would you do the honors of opening the caviar, please? Yes. Sound they're good. There we go. Okay. Great. So the first thing we're looking at is, is color, right? So when you're getting it out of the, a tin, that's probably not the most optimal place to get it because there could be interferences in the flavor with the metal. In this case, this is a glass jar. Um, so, but what I'm gonna do is because of the, the top, I'm going to, whoop, I just dropped some. Uh, I'm gonna put this aside. And I'm dropping more caviar. Uh, anyway, why don't you take a look at that? Do you see any, you know, color? What color do you see? Like a olive green, olive green and black. Yes, definitely. You can see the olive green. What about? Um, does it does it appear dry? Does it appear wet? wet? Does it have a little bit of stickiness to it? Definitely stick Definitely stick like yeah. <laughs> right. so One of the uh, things about white sturgeon caviar um, compared to a lot of the other like traditional black caviar is that white sturgeon can come in all sorts of different uh, color profiles from the traditional black to uh, yellow and gold to the green. Um, can have modeling, uh, a cat's eye. Um, there's all sorts of different types of uh, colors that can happen in white sturgeon, which makes it really unique in the caviar world. So we've looked at the the texture, we, we see that it's not too dry, right? That tells us how the, the canning process is going, um, that um, it's, it's nice and moist. Uh, it seems to be sticky, so it's holding together. These are all interested, these are all good kind of characteristics of caviar that we're looking for. Is this oil that we can see here? So is it oil that you can see there? So what we're seeing there is that, actually that's the oil from the egg itself. Uh, from the caviar, so some people call it a bead, the caviar bead. It's not surprising when you're packing eggs into a jar that some of the eggs may break down uh, over time. So uh, time is also a factor in caviar. So how long is it cured for? Um, I, I'm imagining this was probably 60 to 120 days and then it's repackaged. So uh, luckily for us, this is repackaged directly from the farm uh, versus it's sent someplace else and then repackaged and you have no idea where the source of your caviar came from. So we know exactly what farm, what fish, uh, and when this caviar uh, was packaged.
one of the first things that you would normally do in caviar is, um, you know, we've looked at the we looked at the color. What about the size of the eggs? And these are all parts of the grading of caviar. So when I look at these eggs, they seem to be they're not too small, uh, but they're not really big eggs. And so I think that's why this is the reserve. So you get this this color, but then you get the reserve. Uh, and so. That's another factor that lends into the price of your caviar, how big the, the eggs actually are. And that also in, uh, has an effect on the salting process, as well as that curing. Okay, normally we would also want to see if we can smell the caviar. Is there an olfaction? Can you, can you smell it? Does it have a, does it have a smell? Uh, Fishy. That's interesting. It smells, it smells a little earthy to me. Earthy. Okay. Okay. Can you smell it? Does that a smell? I smell it, but actually yeah i think it is <laughs> you, do, you do have a smell okay so so olfaction right olfaction is part of the uh, enjoyment of caviar so what is the smell and there's there's different smell profiles uh nutty uh, earthy nutty. uh salty can you smell it should be fishy like i don't smell fish yeah so, i smell the fishy and the earthy i don't smell the fish. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna, when we go to eat the caviar now, is what you're, you're not gonna bite into it. You're going to actually put it onto your tongue and then you're gonna push it up to the roof of your mouth and see how it, you know, does it hold its texture? Does it hold its shape? Does it pop? Uh, is, it, is it mushy? And then what do you think about the saltiness? How does the flavor linger? Does it stay with you for a long time? So these are the types of things that we're looking for. So when you go ahead and you put it in your mouth again, we're gonna just you're gonna push it up to the your palate, and you're just going to just slowly just kind of you know press it up against the top of your palate and give you a sense and allow it to melt into your mouth. Are you okay there, Sarah? <laughs> you, are you crying? No, I'm just trying to figure out how to describe it. Um, or let me have, let me, you scoop me out. <laughs> I'm gonna come around. And record Definitely it. salty. <laughs> Definitely salty. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, well. thank you. <laughs> Is it how you thought it would be? <laughs> That's I, what have I, <laughs> I don't think I've tried anything like it. <laughs> I, so I, don't, I can't say that that's what I was expecting. I, was not expecting that. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe um, it. Um, strong. Not strong. Very strong. Salty. It does not pop. The eggs don't, it didn't, don't pop. It didn't pop. Like I didn't feel it either. It just kind of just kind of like melt melted yes melts in your tongue um mm. <laughs> <laughs> well let's try some more let's, let's get another let's just take another bite let's go ahead and take another bite and try to get it same spoon or yeah just use the same spoon yeah. you're fine yeah i'll tell you i'll, I'll do it with you here Try that again. So it's slightly, it's just got a, a little bit of salt. It's not overly salty, so that's good. Uh, too much salt and caviar, in my opinion, uh, degrade is is actually uh, loses the value of caviar. Uh, the more the less salt it is, usually the more expensive it is, um, and just because of the shelf life associated with it, um, you can, it has a hint of salt, 
um, and I can taste the salt. If the salt actually lingers, um, I can taste I taste that salt. The butteriness, right? I can taste that butteriness, and it does have a little hint of the uh, a little hint of earthiness uh, uh, to it, or whatever. Again, and that's this is probably the reserve. It gives it a different flavor profile. One of my favorite ways to eat caviar is on french fries. In this case, uh, a lot of people will eat it potato, potato chips. chips. Potato chips, thank you. Crisps or, or potato chips, depending on where you live. Uh, so we're going to try that. We're going to put a little bit on the on the crisps, how it may accentuate or de-accentuate, uh, is that a word, uh, the, the, ca the flavor of the caviar. That chip was just too strong. It's too strong. Mm -hmm. too chip is too Overpowers. Strong. Or you didn't have enough caviar. That's true. That would be that would be my answer. I just didn't have enough caviar on my item that I was eating. Well, let's see about that one. Like, I think like it's a familiar flavor. It feels a little bit better. Uh, okay, so here's another way I like to eat caviar, uh, and that's with oysters. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, likes to think about the interconnectivity between the uh, the mountains and the sea. And so um, knowing what kind of his thoughts around that, I, I nicknaming this uh, Sierra to the sea. So that's how uh, eating oysters and, and caviar together. Uh, I've coined this now. Everybody owes me money. The California caviar and, and California oysters, Sierra to the sea. If I didn't have shells in mine, I think I'd like mine better. <laughs> what did you like? Which one did you like the best? <laughs> I think they're actually along. I think I like it. Oh, I like mine on the on the gluten-free saltine. Um, I might be a bit of an oyster purist. <laughs> Although I like my oysters with mignonette sauce, so it was good. But I think that it made it like with the saltiness and the oyster and combined with the saltiness of the caviar. I actually didn't even really taste the caviar. Yep. I think Maybe if you have like another bigger oyster, if you didn't put enough caviar, I don't know. I think that is always the default answer. It needs more caviar. It needs more caviar. Right, that is the default answer. Abalone Queen, Dr. Sarah Bowl. No, I'm just ready to eat some more caviar and oysters. Any uh, any thoughts there, uh, uh, Dr. Rebecca Mata? <laughs> um, 
Uh, I can't think of anything else, but it was very interesting new experience. I'm very happy I was honored actually to be here and try this amazing caviar and this amazing oyster as well. Okay, so we've eaten caviar by itself. We've eaten caviar with potato chips. We've eaten caviar with oysters. Um, and we've eaten with some crackers. Um, and I think, you know, I think the point uh, I want to get at is how do you eat caviar? However you want to eat caviar. Enjoy it in, you know, in decadence with oysters. Enjoy it with simplicity with potato chips. You know, eat it. Uh, by itself enjoy it and by itself so however you want to enjoy your caviar uh, I think is really how you should eat it